Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. The Environmental Protection Agency has finally decided how it wants to proceed with the Westlake landfill in Bridgeton. It's been contaminated by radioactive waste for decades now. Here to bring us up to speed on what the EPA is thinking is St. Louis Public Radio Science reporter Eli Chen. Eli, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. You know, I think King Solomon would be proud of the EPA on this because it's come down right in the middle of the options that it had. (laughs) Yes. So the options on the table were basically either a cap, partial removal, or a full removal of the waste. And the EPA has gone for partial removal. Something like about 70% of the waste will be removed under this proposal. Uh, Well, uh, I keep hearing from the EPA Director Pruitt that this is a proposed remedy that they have. What does that mean? That means this is not the final decision. So um, a proposed remedy is often followed by a a public comment period of 30 days. This might be 60 days. It really depends. And uh, then it's followed by however long the EPA wants to deliberate on its final decision. And then they'll release a record of decision saying this is what they will do. This sounds like it could drag on for years. It could. <laughs> the The wheels of government can run slowly, so it can run for years. What's the initial reaction to residents in the area? They've been fighting this battle for a long time. Yeah, so the Just Moms STL group, which has been the loudest uh, in regards to the Westlake landfill contamination, they have long said that anything less than full removal is unacceptable, but They've been uh, they've been regarding this actually as a victory, and uh, to some degree they feel like this you know this may be you know as good as they can get, um, you know hoping hopefully you know, what they're hoping is that you know Pruitt will increase you know increase it to maybe eighty percent excavation. What's going to happen to whatever they dig out of uh, uh, underground, or and and when they do it, what happens to the debris? The debris will likely be carted off-site uh, to a facility. There, there are four. There are four facilities that are named in the final feasibility document um, that was leading up to the proposed remedy, and uh, some of these uh, these locations are in Utah, in Idaho, Colorado, um, Michigan, and the, there's only one that's. Uh, I believe, licensed by the Nuclear Regulatory uh, Commission, and that's um, I think that's in Idaho. Is this going to just eliminate that burn that we've been hearing so much about over the years, the fire? Uh, so the, the fire is a separate thing. Um, and actually, I have to correct myself. I think the NRC um, licensed the facilities in Utah. But um, anyways, um, it's estimated that the underground fire will keep smoldering until, I think, the mid-2020s. Um, but uh, this this uh, will not quite address that since that's under the state's jurisdiction. Do we have any sense at all as to once this gets started and whenever it gets started, if it's going to represent any kind of a problem for the residents? There's, I assume there's going to be dust, there's going to be debris, there's going to be stuff flying around, I would assume, that could be harmful. That remains to be seen. Um, right now we have you know, a few details of the moment. The actual proposed remedy document has yet to be posted to the Federal Register, so I don't know the full details myself of the full plan, but um, it will be posted on Tuesday, and that's when the public comment period will begin. And and the uh, owners of the landfill, what are they saying? They've said so far that they're glad that the EPA has come down on a decision, and, you know, they'll they'll continue to, you know, work with the EPA on this. <laughs> What's it going to cost? Uh, so this is estimated to cost uh, $236 million, this partial removal. Um, the cheapest plan would have been to cap it, which would have come at $75 million, and the full removal would have uh, come at $695 million. So this has come kind of right down the middle. Okay. So what what is the very next step? Where do we go from here at this moment? Well, right now uh, we're just waiting for the – the document, the proposed remedy, to be posted to the Federal Register and, you know, for public comments to be rolling in. So we may be finally nearing the end of this uh, long simmering, if no, you pardon me. No, I, I, there's still a lot more ahead. This is the EPA saying this is what they might do. And then, you know, it could be some time before they say what they will do. And then it could be some more time before they start the work. So it could be years. As we say in radio, stay tuned. 
This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com. 